Great. So today we're going to take a look at sorting, um, sorting an array, and we're going to look at the first algorithm um, to sort an array, which is called bubble sort. Um, has any of, has any of you, Douglas or Jen, um, implemented bubble sort before? I I don't rem I feel like I've I've certainly seen it a handful of times. I don't think I've fully written one out. Got it. Okay. Yeah, I think I did. Um, mm -hmm. That's where you have to swap the the numbers. Exactly. Yes, we're gonna take a look at that. Mm -hmm. Great. Okay, you have had some exposure. Uh, which is definitely helpful. <clears throat> so um, let's start by, by sort of asking ourselves why, like why, why do we want to sort an array? What are some reasons behind that? Um, any thoughts? Well, um, having a sorted array uh, would allow us to access the data easier, um, knowing if there's a beginning and like, like where it begins and where it ends roughly. Mm -hmm. uh, tell, tell me more about uh, easier. Uh, well, we know that the lowest point theoretically would be at the, uh, at the start, uh, or we know which, we know that it'll be anchored to one end or the other. Um, and mm -hmm. as such, uh, we can use, like, I feel like there are other means of searching that we could use that are, are very fast. Like we can implement like a binary search on sorted data. Mm -hmm. um, and that might Great. save us some, some time complexity. Absolutely. So yeah, let's say access data easier um, and actually faster, right? Because if you know, <clears throat> If you know that the lowest element, the smallest element is always in the beginning, you don't have to search uh, through the entire collection. Um, you will be able to access it in constant time, for example. Um, an example is if we need to, if we need, for example, if we need to know the largest element and the smallest element very often in a piece of data, it is better to have it sorted so that um, we are accessing that data in constant time. <clears throat> we wouldn't need to do any search. Um, uh, let's do, <clears throat> so yes, access data easier, faster. Um, also, you know, like you could say, like sorting is also a way of organizing your data, right? Um, you often time sort your folders or you sort like, your socks and your clothing so that, and if you think about why you do that, ultimately is to access that faster, to know where to find things faster. That's why I keep my, um, I keep my, um, my shoes in the same place always. And I don't mix them with, with the place that I keep my, uh, my shirts, uh, for example, <clears throat> to be able to find it faster. Cool. Um, also, if we have, if we have data um, sorted, then we can implement uh, what Douglas mentioned, which is binary search, which trickles back into the faster point here. <clears throat> um, so we can say find. Um, find something using binary search. Any, anything else anyone wants to add? This sort of trickles back here. <laughs> binary search way faster as we have seen last time. Cool. Um, also, let's say another another reason of what, why you want to have data sorted is, well, let's say you have a list of data and you want to get uh, a range. Do we want to have all the numbers that are within ten and fifteen, or how many? How many? Let's say I guess a, a bit more more realistic 
example could be if we have if we have a survey and we want to find out how many people are voted for X reason in a certain range um, of percentage, then we are able, if we have that data sorted, we know we, we can go to this point where it started or the first value that falls in the, into that range uh, and then go to the end where that range ends and simply count how many elements are in between the two. And then we have, um, we're able to tell how many people voted uh, above 80% on X uh, issue, for example. <clears throat> cool. Um, okay. What are, um, what are, what are things that you, um, what are some things that you may know um, about sorting or anything sort of vocabulary around it uh, or anything else that comes to mind when you think of sorting? Mm -hmm. That some of the implementations are better than the other. It, it depends on like the situation, uh, better is subjective, but um, mm -hmm. I think depending on, depending on input, there are some some implementations are better than others. That is right. Uh, oh, that's why it doesn't right here. <clears throat> so there are multiple multiple implementations. Um, okay. There are one of those that the one we're going to see today, like bubble sort. <clears throat> there is merge sort. Actually, let me see where now that all of these are sorts merge quick. And um, <clears throat> insertion, etc. And some are more efficient than others in time, uh, some are more efficient than others in space. Um, and generally, we now we prefer fast time and space comes kind of cheap these days. Uh, so we prefer to gain time. Okay. Anything else? Around sorting. Um they all should have the same mm. goal in the end, which is to sort either alphabetically or numerically the data. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Mm, yeah, the same. Um, all implement, multiple implementations, so same goal. Cool. <clears throat> Okay, um, cool. So we, let's move on to, so why we talked about the why. Some, so some real world examples of that and um, something that hopefully maybe you it will come to mind as, as you do it is let's say, you know, we have, <clears throat> we're all familiar with text, uh, um, your files in your computer and how you can sort them. So let's see, let me go to my downloads, for example. <clears throat> so there's a lot of data um, here and then I can, I can sort if I click on date added, uh, for example, now my data is sorted um, in the data is added. I don't know, can you guys see the magnifying glass or no? It's not magnifying, but I do see it's like a highlight square though. Yeah, is that, it doesn't magnify inside. Uh, no, uh, but no, it does. It weird. does highlight where your where your like pointer is. That's so weird because I that must be as maybe as a zoom thing because when I when I when th that square appears, I'm like magnifying there. Um, hmm. But but I'm sorry that you can't see it, I and mean, this is kind of really small. <laughs> um, 
but but my files are now sorted in the way that in, by the date. Um, and somehow someone wrote an algorithm that takes this a list of files and their dates, and then it will do what we're going to learn how to do. Uh, it sorts them. Um, we don't know what implementation they use. Um, possibly one of the more efficient ones in time complexity. <clears throat> um, but yeah, even when you when you sort by kind, so that all of them are in the same, <clears throat> so that now they're grouped. So all the folders first, all the Apple audios next, all the CSV next, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. This is all sorting that some algorithm is running, uh, some algorithm that someone wrote um, to sort it. Uh, cool. Um, in cat, yeah, like another example is getting the best pl player in the NBA based on various stats, um, or you're doing sorting all the time. Like when when you're shopping, for example, you may want to sort the prices of the items you're, you're shopping for in ascending um, or descending order, etc. Cool. Okay, so there are going going back uh, to what Douglas had brought up. There's multiple sorting algorithms, multiple ways of doing it. Um, and let's just remember that an algorithm is just a set of instructions uh, designed to perform a specific task. Um, <clears throat> and there are many ways in which computer scientists um, went into solving uh, this problem of organizing the data and sorting it. Uh, and today we'll be discussing bubble sort. You can see that bubble sort is um, rather inefficient in terms of um, time complexity uh, being a quadratic time or of n squared. And same for insertion sort and selection sort. Um, Merge sort and quick sort are faster. Um, they usually take up a bit more space, <clears throat> but they are significantly faster. Um, these algorithms can be complicated to wrap our heads around, um, but it's about first, I think, just not being intimidated um, and then breaking it down uh, step by step, line by line. Um, um, yeah. So it doesn't. At the end of the day, they're still the same. Um, they're still the same, right? Because we can't prioritize one over the other, unless like if you're trying to conserve um, time, then you would use um, merge sort and quick sort, right? Mm -hmm. But then if you want to conserve space, then selection sort, insertion sort, and bubble sort. That's mm -hmm. what you have to go after. Mm -hmm. Exactly. Yep. Nice. Um, <clears throat> and as I said at the beginning, like most of the time we use these ones uh, or in, in computers that don't have constrained uh, memory, for example, um, where you have ample space. And, uh, and as I said, space is rather cheap these days in, in our modern computers. Uh, we prefer to save in time. Um, and utilize a bit more space. Mm -hmm. Cool. Um, <clears throat> okay, so from this one, we're gonna take a look at um, bubble, bubble sort. Um, these are all the these are all the most common ones. Um, I think there is this resource uh, on the. What's it called? Um, Vigo shit, shit that has this table here at the bottom about the sorting algorithms. Um, so you can see, you can see merge sort, for example, merge sort um, in the worst case is n log n. Um, the worst case in space is, is linear space. Uh, we can see bubble sort, for example, being in the worst case of n square. And remember that we are always thinking about 
the worst case, most of, most of the time we're thinking about the worst case for time complexity, but we see that the space complexity is constant. Um, bubble sort doesn't use any additional space. And these are, these are our list of all of them. Uh, from these, like the most common ones are like bubble sort is the first one everyone learns. Um, and then from there, moving on to some of the more efficient ones like merge sort, uh, quick sort. From those, I, the ones, these are actually the two that I personally have the most experience with in merge sort. Um, merge sort, I feel like it's so, it's so cool the way that it works. Um, that, that's I feel one of the reasons why I feel so drawn to it. Um, but I haven't explored some of the others as much, uh, but hopefully we'll get to talk about merge sort in our next session um, and see how it's more efficient uh, than bubble sort. But yeah, this is basically uh, all of them. I think tree sort, tree sort is, yeah, tree sort is, Trezor is you have an array, but you also have a binary search tree. What you do is you are inserting into the binary search tree, and at the end, the tree will be sorted, um, for example. But there are some others. OK. Um, so yeah, this is, this is a, oh, some fun fact as, I, as we just came to this. I had bought, um, well, we, at Pursuit, we have um, we had bought this poster to have it in our classroom. That was right before the pandemic kicked in, um, and we never got to see it. I, I have it I have it in I have it somewhere <laughs> in my room. Um, it's it's a huge poster with um, with sort of data structures, data structures here and their time complexities, um, and they are raised stored in on the right side. Um, Hopefully, maybe 7.0 will get to see the poster. <laughs> um, but yeah, cool. Um, OK, let me close this here. Great. Um, so today, we'll talk about bubble sort. Um, let me see. OK, before, before we go into bubble sort, I wanted us to actually take a look at like the built-in sort method, um, which uh, you might have used in the past. Uh, just so that we take uh, sort of two notes really. Um, sort, the array prototype sort, which is what you are probably have done already a few times uh, when you need to organize data. It's, it's imp the, the time and space complexity um, of the sort is not guaranteed. It depends on the implementation. And what that means is that um, most browsers have uh, efficient implementations like merge sort, uh, et cetera. But it still depends, like the way in which you sort an array in Firefox, in Firefox um, might, be, is, might be different from the way that you sort it or the implementation is different from the way that you sort it in, in Chrome, for example, or in Node. All those have like different implementations. We can rely on, we can assume as, the, the, as developers that they are using efficient implementations uh, that are at least um, N log N. Um, so we don't, we don't worry too much about that. If we were saying sort, you just assume that it's gonna be a good, um, one of the fastest, uh, implementations, um, et cetera. Uh, so that's that. Uh, also, it source the array in place. Um, so it doesn't create a copy of the array or anything like that. That's the same way in which we're going to do our bubble sort, uh, sorting the array in place. Um, and um, one, one note here, when you're using sort, um, we have to be careful because uh, the default order, sort order is ascending, um, but that is built upon converting the elements to, into strings, then comparing the sequences uh, of UTF-16 code units. What that means is um, stuff like this. Um, if we have an array 134, 21, and 100,000, when you sort it, 
is going to look like this. You would think that 100,000 will be all the way at the end. Um, and that four will be like here or lower, lower and a lower index. But because you have to watch out for that because the elements are being turned into a string first um, and then compared um, based on their unit 16 uh, or UTFA 16 code unit, which are the number representation of these strings. Um, so we have to be careful with that. Uh, when we want to sort, when we want to sort, um, well, actually, before I go there, this is like an, the other example. We have the months, um, and we sort it just calling months that sort. Uh, they will get they will get uh, sorted in alphabetical order. Um, and it, but again, it's it's all underlined it being based on their UTF sixteen. Um, code units, um, right? And if we want to sort it in numerical order, we actually need to pass in a compare function. Um, a compare function. We we're gonna see if we can get to having our our bubble sort also take a compare function to decide whether we want to sort in um, ascending or or descending order, for example. Um, but the, using the compare function, um, we could have something like this. This will sort in, in numerical order, where you have the sort, and then you pass in a function that will receive two elements, A and B. And then you want um, you subtract B from A. Um, and if the result, yeah, this is what this is what the compare function um, form should be. If A is less than B by some ordering criteria, let's say just numerical order, uh, then we can return minus one. If A is greater than B uh, by the ordering criteria, we can return one. Uh, otherwise they must be equal. A must be equal to B, uh, we can return zero. And if the function um, receives those arguments, what happens is, um, if it returns less than zero, um, if A and B, if the compare function with A and B returns less than zero, then A is sorted to an index lower than B. Um, otherwise, um, if it's zero, they just are, they are not swapped or not changed. If it returns greater than zero, then um, B gets put to a lower index than A. Um, and we'll hopefully revisit this. Um, as we implement this part of on our as on our function, but I just wanted to sort of give that general, very general overview of um, sorting an array using the built-in method, which is which is absolutely what you should do. Um, we actually implement our own sorts more for sort of the thought exercise and understanding how it works. But um, in an, in an interview um, or in a coding challenge, don't write your own sort. Um, use the array um, prototype sort uh, method. Mm -hmm. Questions or thoughts up until here? Okay, so we know what sort is about. Great. Um, okay, so let's implement bubble sort. Um, so bubble sort, let me re reload this so that we can see. Oh, the animation did not restart. Let's open this up one up. So bubble sort um, works by comparing the first two numbers. And if they're in the wrong order, it swaps them. And then compare the second pair of numbers. And if they're in the wrong order, swap them. Um, and so on. And this guarantees that in the first pass of bubble sort, the largest element um, will be at the end of the array. So you see how eight now is being carried over to the end of the array because, and at the end of the first pass, we're guaranteed to have the largest element at the end of the array. So we got that one done eight 
and then we repeat the step. Um, here, shop if they're in the wrong order. Um, and here, the second largest element will be carried over to the end. Um, like that, we're going to see, for example, in the next comparison, five and six, that this did not get swapped because they're in the right order. Um, this doesn't get swapped because they're in the right order. These two get swapped. And these two will get swapped. And now we have the second largest element settle. We know now we have the two, uh, those two sorted. And it just repeats um, on and on. Now, um, bubble sort, I think as this part, this part makes sense, right? Um, how it's working. But I think something that I that I think about bubble sort is that it's still it's kind of tricky to how do I write this? How do I write? I, I know what it should be doing, but it's, it might be tricky to sort of conceptualize. Um, but I want us to. We'll, we'll we'll get there. I was thinking of like doing an exercise, uh, but we'll get we'll build we'll get there um, in small steps. So. Uh, note also one another point that I wanted to make is once you know that the array is sorted, like for instance, we don't never need to look, at this point we don't need to look at five and six ever again. We know that those are already in the in the set order, so we're always sort of uh, shortening how far we go in the array as as we realize that that part becomes sorted, um, and we'll see how that plays out in our implementation. Also, I should have said, I'm not, we'll see. I don't think it will take the three hours today, uh, maybe two. Uh, we'll see how it goes uh, with time. Um, okay, so here's the first task. We're gonna build it piece by piece. What I want you to do in five minutes is to um, write a function that loops, in, loops backward of an array and logs the elements. So the task is, oops, uh, write a function that loops over an array backwards, loops over, lo loops over an array backwards and logs uh, all the elements. Let's take five minutes to do that. Um, uh, what array can I give you? Let's see. Well, actually, just come, uh, just come up with your own array. Uh, actually, I kind of, I kind of want to do this one. Yeah, let's use this one. I'm gonna paste it in the chat if you wanna do this array. So console log that array uh, looping backwards. Let's do that for five minutes. Mm -hmm. Awesome. Um, Joanna, how did it go for you? So I got it to work, but I think I have, um, so I printed each of the elements, mm -hmm. but after I print six, it says undefined. So um, do you want to share your screen? Let's take a look. Oh, oh sorry. Let me stop share. Yeah. <laughs> That's an important <laughs> step. Mm -hmm. 
So, okay. Six, uh, oh, okay. So it's printing, it's printing all of them, but it's printing undefined at the end. Yeah. Okay. Uh, Douglas, what do you think? Is it the, hmm. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm sorry. I thought it was muted for a second. Um, is it the greater than or equal to zero for I uh, that's causing the issue? I'm trying to look, I'm digging into it now. I feel like array size is a good way of dealing with the array length minus one. Because mm -hmm. um, if it is greater than or equal to zero, I think it would still stop at one. Um, so, uh -huh. Yeah, does that, am, am I right on that? I, right. I, so I think I think we went. Uh, I think it was. I I also was thinking I was in that part uh, greater than or equal to zero. But I think it's actually the fact that the function. So it is it, correct. It's correct it, because we want we want it to start at the end of the array and we want it to i to actually go to zero. You got it. Is it a return because I'm not returning? That's exactly right. Mm. Um, which is which is fine. We don't have to. We, I actually didn't ask to return anything. So what you could do is just uh, get rid of the console in line eight. Is that is what is giving us that undefined. Okay, but well, great. We have the loop backwards. Uh, awesome. This part we're gonna use because we're gonna um, we're gonna start we're gonna we're gonna start. Um, I don't, do you remember how the uh, the bubble sort was not getting all the ways to the end once it realized that those were already sorted? We're gonna use this part from there uh, for that for that. Uh, okay, so let me um, now the, the next task is this one. So in a separate function, you're gonna write a you're going to write, hold on, let me, I have have the prompt here because I had written it. Um, and I'll share it in the Slack channel. Uh, sorry, not in the Slack, in the, the chat here. Um, Okay, um, so write a function called swap that takes in an array and two indices. Um, it should take uh, the, the two indices we could call A and B or we could call I and J. Uh, and what it should do is it should swap, it should swap the elements. So if I call, um, if I call swap, for example, with my original array and I say uh, one, let's say zero and one, my result should be an array with five, six, three, one, eight, seven, two, and four. Um, so if we call swap as I as I as I put in the chat with the array that I initially shared. Um, with zero and one, it should swap the elements. Um, uh, those two indices. So the element at one goes to zero and the element at zero goes to one. Mm -hmm. Is that clear? So the only thing we're swapping is the first two elements, that's it. You're swapping the elements at the given indices. So, so this is because that is true for this case because I passed zero and one. Uh, I could also pass different indices, let's say, um, here, this is another example. Say two and four. Oops. So 
So if I swap two and five, oh, that was supposed to be a four. I that was my mistake. If we if we swap two and four instead of five, um, the elements that those two indices become swapped. Um, this is cor the correct one. Mm -hmm. Okay, let's take some other uh, five minutes for that. This is how I, I implemented my swap. Um, I, uh, I take in an array in A and a B. Um, I assign, uh, I just assign a variable to the element at array at A and array at B. Uh, so that way I have both, uh, so that way I can insert them properly. And then I call array.splice starting at A, because that would always be the where we want to start. Um, we know it's always going to be the two elements adjacent to each other. So, so just cut out two and then reverse, like, like stick in, in reverse order element B, then element A, and then just return the array at the end. Mm -hmm. Okay. So this swaps the array. There is, these are doing a bit of extra work by doing splice. Mm. Um, and also, um, you did mention, and, and I think I imply that when I gave the problem, which will be I implied, and we saw in the we saw in the algorithm that it swaps two adjacent elements. Um, but let's say if it wasn't adjacent, how could we do it? Um, uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, uh. Uh, uh, Joanne, how does how does how does what are, what were you trying? To? Weird. Oh, there it is. Oh, John. Yeah. So I, I was just gonna go with like an if statement, and just mm. um swap it. I see. I well, thinking. but we, we wouldn't need a we wouldn't need an if statement just yet. Um, it's it, we're not comparing the elements yet. Uh, we just want to swap two elements. Um, so let's do. Uh, well, hmm. let's do this here. Um, let me open a report. Well, you're, you no, know, never mind. I, I think you're about to walk through. Mm -hmm. I was going to suggest a route, but it seems like it's bad for space. Mm. Um, uh, yeah, we wouldn't. We wouldn't need. Uh, we wouldn't. We will all actually. We'll need an aux an auxiliary variable, but it wouldn't. It wouldn't influence the space, mm. uh, really. Let me take the. Let me take the array that we initially had. Um, paste this here. So. Uh, does this work? Format document it does work. Awesome. Um, so. Yep. Yeah. Say that again. Join. No, I just got it to work. So. Okay. Um, how do you do it? Let's take a look. The I think I still need to um test the others i think it works with this one mm, wait no it just it's just comparing the the numbers uh five and six yeah you see like uh line 22 yeah i see mm -hmm. yeah okay uh let's take a look at it here um really quickly Cool. So swap takes in an array. Um, it takes i and j, let's say. I'm not going to have it return anything. But uh, I want it, I want to call it, if I call it like this, um, then I should get 
the output uh, the output array. And if I call it like this, I should get this other output array. Um, Sorry, um, we're seeing yeah. another screen, I think. Oh. Yeah. Uh, what screen are you looking at? So uh, GitHub. Um, GitHub, got yeah. it. <laughs> I'm <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Good. Now you should be looking at the right screen. Yep. Um, okay. So I just have uh, an array, a swap function that takes in an array, an i and j. And I want to call array with 0 and 1. And it should wipe those elements, so six and five, because those are the element at zero and the element at one, should be swapped so that I get five and six. Um, if I call the same function with the same array, but two and four, the element at index two, which is three, should be swapped swap with an element at index uh, four, which is eight. So therefore, eight now is at index three, uh, at index two, sorry, and three will be at index four. So let's take a look. So to swap them, um, we can, let's have a temporary variable and I'm gonna store uh, array at i, arrays of i there. Um, then what we'll do is we're gonna assign array sub i to be equal to whatever we have at array sub j uh, and then array sub j uh, we make it equal to whatever we had at array sub i, which now we have in temp. Um, and why is this giving me that red line? Not too sure. Um, and then let's console log. I'm going to console log the array here and after as well. Let's see, we got what we expected. Console log, um, we get five and six, uh, where first we have six and five. Okay, that's good. And then, well, that 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 swap is preserved because we're swapping in place. Um, so that five and six is still swapped because now the second swap is operated on index two and four, which should say eight. Um, now for index two, and three for index four, um, which is the opposite of what we had here. Um, three at index two and eight at index four. Now we swap them so that three is at index three is at index two and three is at index uh, four. Does this make sense? It does. I was overthinking uh, it. <laughs> okay. And uh, just to make sure, Joanne, how do you feel? Yeah, it makes sense. I'm just trying to understand why um, the difference between the temp, the temp and the array and I. Yeah, um, yeah, let me go over that. Um, so what we want to do is we want to have a temporary placeholder for array at I. Um, visually, visually, what we're doing is this. Um, I think it will be, it will be good to see it. Um, visually what we're doing is this. So we have this array. Um, hmm. Should it, let me try to make, yeah. Um, the array, oh. Let me just draw it. Six, uh, five. My fives are are always so weird because I write them. It's just the way that I learn how to write them. I do Eight. the same thing. <laughs> uh, cool. I think my e's are also weird. I, I do them. I do them like I realize that most people do it differently. Oh, uh, but cool. Um, so we have our array, right? And we're saying. We're saying we want to swap i, which is, oh, let's say this in j, which is this. So what we're doing actually, conceptually, and I should have I should have cut 
let me copy this code. Ah, this zoom things all over. Um, let me put some text here so we can take a look at the code. So conceptually what we're doing here is we are taking, we have a temp. Um, and what we're doing is we say a temp is equal to array at i. That is so that we make a copy of array at i. Um, so we make a copy of that and we put that in temp, right? Um, we made a copy of that and we put that in temp. And then we say array at i is gonna be whatever we have at array at j. And array at j is five. So what that will do is we move this one or we actually, we copy this one and we replace it. We replace this one. Um, if I could get this to work. We replace that with uh, five. And then what we're saying is array at J is equal to temporary so that six overrides that five. Um, and what we in turn have, why is my keyboard shortcut not working? Um, what we have is then uh, swapped, have the element swapped. So that's why we have that temporary. Um, so what we do is, let me go over again. We make a copy of, we make a copy of the array at i, and we store that in temp. Then we erase. We made a copy of five, which is array at j, and we store that copy at what was all array at i. And then we override what array at j has with temp. Uh, and then we in turn have the element swapped. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Cool. Okay. Um, so yes. Yeah, so that will that just requires that extra variable, but that doesn't influence our time or our space complexity because uh, if you think about it, space complexity is all about how big is the input and how does that size correlate to the space that's taken up? So here it doesn't matter how big array is or how big i is or how big j is, temporary will just hold a simple number. It doesn't directly correlate to the sizes of, the, of its inputs. Cool. So we have a function that um, swaps the elements. Now, um, what is the next step? So, so let me do the function that goes backward, right? we'll, we'll, actually we'll do that, we'll do that next. Um, so I'm gonna start writing here, um, bubble sort, which will just take an array. Um, and what we'll do is, <clears throat> what we'll do is um, have the for loop that you have, which is going backwards. So I'm gonna say for let i equal um, array dot length minus one, uh, while i is greater or equal to zero, i minus minus. So that's this is the loop that I asked you to write uh, first. Cool. Um, and let me take a look here. Once we have that, um, oh yeah, this is the stuff that I always um, find a bit tricky. But so we're gonna have. We saw that bubble uh, bubble sort uses is all of n square. Uh, what are the what is sort of a, a common characteristic of all of n square times? They have nested what? For loops. 
nested for loops. That's right. And if you think about it, if we go back to our visualization, there is this there is this loop that's going swapping um, elements, and that loop starts at first. It starts with the first two elements, um, and that's it's just gonna keep going. But after it finishes on the first round, it has to restart. It has to go back to the beginning and restart. Um, right after it finishes the first round, and also let's see. Um, uh, this this website I think I have mentioned it a few times. Visual visualgo.net um, to visualize algorithms. They have this uh, one in sorting where we can visualize sorting. Oh, the website is running a bit slow. And let's do bubble sort. Let's create, let's, I'm gonna actually put the array that we have so that we don't have to do a lot of context switching. Um, the array we have is this one. So I'm gonna add this here, go. And also Visual Go also has some, oh, maybe it's, maybe the website is broken. Uh, here it should show pseudocode. Hmm. Maybe the website is experiencing some issues. Well, let's see if it works. Um, let's click on sort. Oh, there, there it is. Mm. And and then I'm gonna I'm gonna slow it down a little bit so uh, we see it again. So this is this is one of this is one this is another implementation, uh, slightly different, but it's still doing the same process. So we see that we look at the first two, and then swap them. Uh, next to and swap them and so on. Um, we're going, this, this loop is going forward. And then once we do that, we need to restart back in the front. We restart back in the front, but we never go to the eight. So we had that nested loop. That's the loop we're gonna do next. Um, so, how do we do that loop? Um, we have a, we have a loop that goes from to the back. Oops. There's yep, got it. Um, so we have the the loop that goes backwards is the loop that is going to let us not go to seven and not go to eight um, once those are sorted and so on. Oh, this is interesting. <laughs> um, oh no, I hit, I hit refresh. I hit refresh accidentally. But then the next loop is um, just a loop that goes forward. And I'm gonna say for let J uh, equals zero, while J is less than, um, so we're gonna do well. J is less than um, I. J plus plus. And here we're going to do. We're going to check, compare the elements, and then check where they are. So we're gonna say, if array. Um, so we are here with, we have to actually think. Uh, we're gonna do array j. If array j is less than array j plus one, this is, a, this is then we're looking at these two elements. If array j is less than uh, array j plus one, oh wait, actually, I think I'm doing this wrong. Maybe we want to do, well, I think it's, this, it's the same thing. I always get confused with the two sides of the same coin. Um, if array at j is less than um, array at j plus one, mm -hmm. 
in this case, array j is not less than. Um, so let's do let's do let's just do the opposite. Well, if array j is greater than array j plus one, if six is greater than five, that means we want to swap. We want to swap these two elements. So we're going to call our swap function, and then we're going to call swap with the same array um, with j and j plus one. So we want to swap the elements there. Uh, we want to swap these two elements. And let's take a look. Um, so I'm going to stop swapping here. Let's call bubble sort on our array <laughs> and console log the array after. Let's see what we got. Now we have an array sorted. Okay. Um, questions, thoughts? It's a lot easier seemingly, it's a lot less code than I thought it would be ultimately. Uh, but mm -hmm. then again, our, our swap uh, function is, is outside of our bubble sort. Um, mm -hmm. I guess in a, in a normal implementation, would you build your swap outside of your bubble sort? Um, or would um, you build it internally? Yeah, I could just build internally in this case because swap is so small. I could, I could just paste those, those lines, three, those three lines of code here. Mm -hmm. Um. So this is the internal loop is that loop that is going comparing, comparing, comparing. And then the outer loop is guaranteeing that once we, this loop will finish always uh, having the last element, having the, the largest element always go, going last. So once we have that, then that means we don't need to, we don't need to look at that last element anymore. So that's why we subtract um, that's why we subtract from I here at first, um, so that we don't go to that last element. In fact, oh, hold on. <laughs> Sorry, I didn't get a chance to mute myself. <laughs> um, thank you. Um, so in fact, if, if, if I console log, if we console log uh, Ray here, We should see that uh, I kind of hate that it's breaking it down into multiple lines, but we see that on the first on the first go, on the first go, um, eight is already in the last spot. On the second go, seven is on the last spot, um, and six, which is the next one larger, and so on and so forth. Um, that I that this outer loop is so that we don't. You know, once we know that this part of the array is sorted, let's just not go comparing there. But um, we actually, it wouldn't make a lot of a, I guess that's kind of like, that's a small, a, a small, um, a small efficiency that we do there, but it's not like super, um, it's not super important. Um, there, I feel like that just made me uh, think about. Hmm. Uh, like, if we take this concept further, like um, of this, this sort of being a small optimization, so we don't look at the last one. Um, we could just have. We could just have a loop. Let's let's call it like let's call it i. Let's say i equals zero. And let's say array size, array dot length. 
And we could just say, wow. So we know that we need to perform this step um, n times. So we can just say, well, i is less than array size. Um, at the end here, i plus plus. Let's see this. Let's see if this still sorts the array. Which it should. We have an array sorted. Um, so again, I, I I feel like I didn't realize that part earlier, so that we can not have sort of forget about that part. Um, but um, yeah, we just need to hear this. This is a simple loop that we're looping for the length of the array. Um, we're looping for the length of the array. Uh, I could have also written this in a for loop. Um, and then I'm comparing each pair, comparing each pair. And we know that the last one on the first go, the last element in the array was guaranteed to be the largest um, and so on. But here we're comparing here, actually to see the difference of these two, let's do this console log comparing. Let's see what we're comparing. So comparing array sub j and array sub j plus one. So let's see what we're comparing here. Um, oh, this is gonna be a lot of uh, comparisons, I think. Mm -hmm. So we see, well, in total, how many comparisons we have here if we have uh, uh, two, four, six, eight elements. Wait, uh, eight elements. And eight, eight square. Um, no, is that, is that true? We don't have like, we don't have total uh, exactly eight square um, comparisons, but um, eight square, um, 64, um, we don't have 64 comparisons here, um, uh, but um, We don't have 64 comparisons here. Why don't we have 64 comparisons here? Let me think about that. Well, I guess like let's first first of all, um, <clears throat> how many comparisons do we have here? Uh, 28, I believe. I might be. I might have miscounted. Mm -hmm. 28. Um, Hmm. Well, let, let, let's just let's just count it here. Zero and then count plus plus twenty eight. Exactly right. Um, We, well, I guess like from here, we're also 28 comparisons. We're not comparing the elements to themselves. So that is, um, that is another 16 comparisons. Um, and the order also, but I feel like I lost, uh, I lost, I lost my train of thought. Um, the point is, the point is, let's see, let's see, these are the comparisons that are going on, um, six and five, and we can say here, we can do Swiss and five, um, 
Oh, no, the six and five, and those will be swapped. Um, oh, we see that it compares six, uh, five and six again. Wait. Where, where do we start? I'm still trying to figure out how we ever meet the, uh, the, the stop for the while loop. If we're inc if we're incrementing i and i is larger than array dot uh, array size, what am I missing? Well, uh, no, I I started. Oh, zero. if i is oh okay that yeah no I'm sorry that was what I was missing. Mm -hmm. I mean, interesting. Uh, why are we comparing this one again, six and five? And where is this other console lock coming from? I think the the swap happens down here. So it switches it and then it shows the swap in five and six. And I think that's the same thing down here. Um, wait, say that again, what part? The swap, like once it swaps it, then mm -hmm. it shows what it looks like down here. So it's mm -hmm. not it's not um comparing them anymore. It's just showing the swap. Mm. Uh, you mean this is the result of the swap? Yeah, like every so even down here when you're um swapping six and three, you're comparing six and three, and then now it's like five and three is a new order. Mm. And it keeps mm -hmm. doing that. No, oh, yeah, I'm so confused. <laughs> um, we're first, first we're comparing six um, and five, and then those get swapped. Mm -hmm. Is this, those get swapped. Um, and then after that is going to compare, um, maybe we, yeah, let's go back to the four here. So it's swept. Oh. It swept is two. Um, maybe there's a, this is like, I think I'm getting in the weeds here. Uh, it swapped this two. And then the next comparison is, the next comparison should be what I think is it should be five and six, six and three. Um, wait, hold on. So we have, um, we have J here and then this is J plus one. Uh, after that, J moves on <clears throat> After the swap, J should have moved on to to here, and then we're comparing J and J plus oh plus one. Where is where am I confusing myself? Six and five, and then comparing. I don't know if does it have anything to do with the fact that you have i is zero and then your g starts at zero, and your g is less than i. Oh yes, 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 yes. Um, this is. Wow, wait, and does this sort the array? <laughs> One, three, five. Oh, this doesn't sort the array. I was like, so miss, uh, yeah, sort of miss shot there. This should be array size. Um, okay. Okay, now we have uh, something that makes a bit more sense. Sorry about that. Um, so I think now we might have, um, 
how many comparisons? Let's try, let's do the count again. O zero and count plus plus. Now we might have 64. Uh, exactly. Now we have 64 comparison. Okay. Um, cool. Sorry about that. Um, now we have 64 comparison. So we're comparing, we're comparing each element to each to every other element. Um, and if uh, let me remove that count stuff. And our array at the end is completely sorted. <clears throat> so then, okay, let's see, let's see our comparisons now. Let me clear this off. Can we clear this off and run it again? Okay, okay. So our our comparisons now are good. We we'll compare six and five, and those get to that get swapped, and then we compare six and three. Um, and those get do they get swapped? They get swapped, and then we compare six and one. They get swapped. So here, sort of six is being carried over to the right, and then at some point we compare six and eight. Yeah, actually, let's do this one side by side with the animation that we had. Um, which we can do if we do this. <laughs> um, so the first comparison, six and five, they get swapped. Uh, now the next comparison, Six and three, okay, swapped. Six and one, swapped there. Six and eight, and six and eight stayed and they moved on. It's eight and seven, swapped eight. Uh, eight and two, swap that, and then eight and four. Eight and now eight. The, we're doing like eight, eight and undefined. We should probably fix that uh, that little bit there, so we don't compare eight and undefined. So this could be like well array at size minus minus one. We run that one to go. Right. Yeah, so we don't have that undefined anymore. We don't compare it to, to undefined. Um, okay, but again, the point is, the point is, uh, so here we saw that there is roughly 64 comparisons being done. And we can see that at the end, at the end, we're comparing six and seven. At, here, there is no swaps going on. <clears throat> There's no swaps going on because these two are already in the right order. So we, we could argue that we don't need to perform those. Uh, we don't need to perform those comparisons as that's what, the, that's what this for loop was really doing there, um, the outer for loop. Um, just so that we don't have those many the, those unnecessary counts at the end. Uh, because here, for example, here, uh, once we finish with eight, which we finish around here, then we are still comparing seven and eight, which are already sorted. And then we compare seven and eight um, again, uh, we compare six and seven, which are already sorted. We compare eight and seven, which are already sorted. So we wouldn't need to just compare those again. And here we compare them again. Uh, and here we compare them again. and we're comparing even more, um, comparing them again. So that's what that outer for loop does. Um, the outer for loop that we had, if we go back to it, um, makes it so that we don't have those repeated 
those repeated um, comparisons. If I clear that and I run again, um, you see where we compare, let's see where we compare seven and eight, we compare seven and eight here. Um, compare seven and eight here, wait, hold on. Uh, is this still, oh, it's because I array size, this is gonna be now I. Let me clear this, run again. Now we see that the number of comparisons is much smaller. So it's a small, a small improvement, uh, but we see that we compare seven and eight here and we never compare seven and eight again because we're guaranteed that those two are already sorted and so on. And once we have, once we compare six and seven and we know that those are already sorted, then we don't compare them ever again. So it's a small, a small uh, optimization there. <clears throat> um, Okay, any questions or thoughts on how this works? <clears throat> no, but I, I appreciate this breakdown. This, this, was, this feels mm -hmm. a lot stronger in my mind now. Okay, glad to hear that. Um, okay, so this is this, is this implementation. Um, we could write bubble sort in the way that the visual go suggested. Um, let's let's actually try to do that part as well. Or actually, hmm. uh, yeah, let's just let's just take a look at it. Um, let me. Um, let me create the array again. Short. Um, So here, um, if we look at this pseudocode, this is slightly different, but let's take a look at it. I'm gonna I'm gonna sum out a little bit here. Let's see if I can add, yeah, a little bit of zoom. Let's see it replaying here. Don't fully mm -hmm. grasp. Oh, I see. Well, hmm. mm -hmm. I don't understand the 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 need for the the, the swapped boolean. Mm. 
Mm -hmm. but it seems like at each step you're you're subtracting one from i and then asking if the two l if the left element is larger than the right element swapping them turning that to true it gets to the end of the loop it asks if swapped and then mm -hmm. while swapped go back to the to the beginning i don't know yeah so so the swap is basically swap means we haven't finished sorting the array is not sorted yet so we need to keep going if if swap is true that means we haven't finished uh sorting um so we can let's try to write this one in javascript in this same way um and this is this is the first time i'm doing this but let's see hopefully we can hopefully we don't get stuck um uh what if actually let me copy that Copy this, paste it in a comment here. Oops. This is not JavaScript, this is not Python, this is not, this is pseudocode, uh, right? Um, we do have, I don't know if you were, um, and maybe you will, we have a um, do while loop in JavaScript, um, but that's not, we could use that one. Um, it's like, I think I never actually used it, <laughs> but we could use it for this one. Uh, but before, before maybe coming back to that, um, we can say, let's do sort, bubble sort to the equal array. And then let's say, uh, let's swap equal to false. Actually, uh, hold on. If we wanted to do this in this way, we need swapped. Wait, let me check. Now, I guess, yeah, well, We'll need to do it like, let's say swap true. Uh, and swap true, instead of the opposite of swap, you see how swap is in the past tense. Now I'm using the present tense saying, so if swap is true, that means that there is still elements to go uh, swap. So what we could do is, um, let's have the length of the array, let's call it, uh, you see how they have like this one? Uh, so I'm gonna say last, index say array that length minus one and then we're going to say while swap while swap um while swap then we do if we ask the same question if array sub j um, is greater than a race of j plus one. Then we call swap with the array j, j plus one. And we set swap to, um, we set swap to false. Hmm. Wait, hold on. Um, yeah, this is this one is a bit. Um, well, swap. We want to check. Sort. Let me see. Let's see if um, mm, I wanted to change the name of swap. Let's call this unsorted. Just to see if it makes a bit more sense. And we're gonna say, uh, if we have to swap, then the unsorted, unsorted becomes false. 
because once we swap, then we sorted that piece. Um, and we're gonna say while swap, uh, while, while unsorted, what we do is uh, oh no, I'm confusing myself again. While we're gonna say unsorted is equal to uh, we're gonna say unsorted is equal to true here. No, let's do unsorted equal to false. And here we say unsorted equal to true. Yeah, um, let me see if I can make sense of this. So we're gonna say the array is unsorted. We start with that true. And as long as the array is unsorted, then we say, well, let's assume the, let's assume the array is sorted. And if we have to swap, then that means the array was not sorted. Therefore we uh, set uh, unsorted to true. Uh, and then we swapped. And then the last thing we do is we say um, last index minus one. That's index mi uh, minus equal. Wait. Plus equal one, um, minus equal one. Yeah. And let's try this. We'll sort two. Oh, J is not defined. Uh, right, I forgot the main loop. Uh, we still need our loop here for that J. Well, J is thus then. Uh, we can use can use last index j plus plus I think you're forgetting um mm -hmm. the let j you just wrote let j inside the loop oh thank you let j equals zero mm -hmm. Um, and we'll do last index. Let's try again. Unexpected token, maybe I have more than what I need. So this one, this is supposed to be for uh, that. That closes there. This closes the for loop. This closes the while loop. That closes the function. <clears throat> Let's try it. Um, this is not sorted. Six, five, three, one, eight. Okay. Uh, let me double check here. We swap. J, the last index. Mm -hmm. Oh, wait, let me see. Let me just make sure that I'm not making a mistake here. Last index. Uh, equal last index minus one. Minus one, okay. And then we do unsorted false, uh, unsorted. So, Unsorted sort of true, then we have last index. Can you well, can you put like just a, a simple console log inside your while loop to see if we it, it's even looping at all through the, if the while even gets hit? Hmm. Yep. Uh, like here. 
Exactly. Yeah, just like a like a gotcha or something. Mm -hmm. There you go. Hmm. Oh wait, my seems that it's not running. It says it's maybe stuck. Oh, okay. Um, let's try it again. Okay, so it's only looping once. <clears throat> We've got a catch for, like, it'll still, well, no, never mind. Mm -hmm. I'm trying to think. There's there's still nothing to turn it true. Like because we like like so it's gonna look at six and five. Six is is larger than five. So it should push it, it should make that swap and then mm -hmm. turn it to true and decrement. Hmm. Let's do a J. Or I, oh, wait, or J is less or equal to, less than last index. That's true, array length. Uh, oh, there's a spelling, is this a spelling mistake here? <laughs> uh, I have a spelling mistake on length, length th. There we go. Um, so spelling mistakes, they can cost, they can cost us time. <laughs> um, okay. Now we see that we have it, we have it sorted. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Mm -hmm. So this is like another way of thinking about it, but it's still the same process. <clears throat> we have the last, the last sorted index the last sorted index and we're saying, while well, array is unsorted and we start with an array unsorted, we, sit, we, we assume, and this is a bit weird here, we assume the array is sorted uh, by setting unsorted to false. And then we go uh, on our loop, uh, on our inner loop. And if we have to swap, then that means the array was not sorted. It means the array was unsorted. So we set that to true. Um, we set that to true, and um, then we the while loop kicks in again after that, um, saying, well, unsorted, true. Um, if we wanted to do, I think is, let's do really quickly to see if we pull it off, um, bubble sort three with the other, to follow more of the pseudocode. Uh, actually, let me copy this. Uh, let's put this here. So this one, uh, we can do the more, um, the more, uh, the do while loop. Um, that is like very, not very common that we use it. So we say, let um, swap equal to false. <clears throat> Let's say let last index equal to array that length minus one. And then for let I, <clears throat> for let i equal to zero while i is less than last index i plus plus if array at sub j is greater than array sub j plus one then swap array array at, oh sorry not j i in this case Uh, 
okay, and I plus one. Oh, well, actually, I think I need the quarter brackets. Is that we swap the elements and we say swapped to true. Well, swapped. Actually, I think this one, I want to put it outside. And we want to also, we need to last index minus minus at the end. Let's try this one out. Swapped is not defined. Oh. Um, I think I have to do the declarations outside. Let's swap that. So it ends up being it ends up being the same as the other one. Uh, just sort of the while loop sort of a, I don't know. I kind of think about it upside down in a little bit. Um, let's have them. This one follows more sort of the pseudocode that we were given. But let's have them a bit closer to each other so you can see them both. Um, any questions or thoughts? Joanne? No, not really. I'm just looking at the dual while loop. Mm -hmm. hmm. No, that's, that's, again, thank you for writing that out for us. Uh, and sorry for stepping away for a moment. That's okay. Um, let me, let me send this link so you can, uh, yeah, and let's take it. Take a take some take some time to review it because it's um, we jumped a few hoops here. So I just shared that link in the chat. Well, I think the uh, I mean bubble sort one certainly does. I mean it's plainly written. Um, even though our, mm -hmm. our swap is, is outside of the, the, the bubble sort. Um, mm -hmm. but, uh, but bubble sort two and three do make sense. Okay. Yeah, uh, cool. Yeah, this one is a bit um, more straightforward now. This true and false, and I have to think about switching it. Mm -hmm. um, cool. Um, so then this is how bubble sort works uh, on this. As we saw in the number of comparisons that happened, if we had an array of eight, and we don't have um, 64 comparisons will be made, um, right? And if we have this small optimization where we don't look at that those last comparisons, because uh, we assume that that part is already sorted, uh, once you know, because we know that the largest element will always be taken to the end, to its final position on eight iteration. Once we have that small optimization, the Comparisons are not 64, but it still will still be in that order. It's not linear either. Um, it's not that, yeah, or, or logarithmic. Uh, it's still in the or in the quadratic um, order. Um, cool. 